In RADS DG10 Seattle, we added five new VCL UI controls. Those new user interface controls were specifically designed for Windows 10, but also support older versions of Windows, such as Windows 8 and Windows 7. They also have full support for custom styling. To access those five new VCL controls, you can go to the Windows 10 category in the tool palette, and there you will find T search box, T toggle switch, T relative panel, T split view, and T activity indicator. Now for each of those five new VCL controls, you will find Object Pascal and C++ demos in the demos folder that gets installed with your RAD Studio 10 Seattle installation. Now the relative panel is a new layout panel that provides a lot of flexibility for designing your user interfaces. It lets you position and align child objects in relation to each other or the parent panel. So for example, you can specify to have a text element always positioned to the left side of the panel and a button always below the text. Now, as you can see with this container control, the relative panel, we have parented a button to it, an edit to it, a shape, etc. And if I select the button, for example, here or the edit, you will see that there are properties for that, uh, for aligning that control with the panel. So, for example, there's a line left with panel, line right with panel, line top with panel property. And you can see in this demo here, we have set up a checkbox and we set up an on click event that allows you to programmatically align that control with the panel. And you can of course choose from many different uh, alignment options. So now let's have a look at uh, this demo here and you'll see when I run this demo that I can select from multiple styles. So for example the Windows 10 blue style, the Windows 10 dark style, uh, the Windows 10 style. We also support for uh, older Windows styles, custom styles, etc. And you see here I can select align left with panel, align right with panel, I can select the button and set alignments for that as well, and I could go and select the uh, shape and I can select uh, alignments for that as well. Now the next uh, control that I'd like to have a look at here is the T-Split View control. And the T-Split View control allows you to easily show and hide application content. And it's designed to be used as a navigational menu, such as a slide and drawer. And as you can see here in this demo, and this is an example that's also included with RAD Studio 10 Seattle, we have our Split View control. We have this hamburger icon here. And this is a uh, icon that's commonly referred to as the hamburger icon, the three-line icon. That is a very common UI element that you might be familiar with on mobile to show and hide a slide and drawer menu. And so we have support now with the T-Split View Control to easily add a slide and drawer menu to your VCL applications. And the T-Split View Control has a multitude of different options that you can choose from for that as well. So for example, we can select a closing style, whether the uh, menu itself, the slider menu will collapse or be shown as a compact menu. If it's collapsed, this entire menu here will be will slide out of view. If it's shown as a co uh, compacted menu, then you will see the icons. Still, once the menu slides out of view, the icons will still be visible on the screen. We also have a display mode option here, of course, docked or overlaid. And um, we have uh, the opening width that we can set, how wide this particular menu panel is, uh, once it's shown, whether we want to use animation, etc. And so, for example, here you can see if I select the uh, uh, the split view, we can select to close it or not, depending on what option is set, of course. And then also, when it once it's closed, then we adjust the button width and the button options. And this demo is really a good example to look at to get a better understanding of what T-Split View is all about. If you're familiar with the FireMonkey control T MultiView, T MultiView is a similar control. Uh, T MultiView and FireMonkey was designed to be used across multiple different form factors and to provide a popover menu, a docked menu, a slide and drawer menu, etc. for multi device applications. And T Split View is quite similar to that for VCL Windows applications. So now let's run this application here on our Windows machine. And you can see here I'm running this on Windows 10. I can show and hide my uh, slide and drawer here, my split view. 
I can select the overlay display mode and you can see this will slide over the UI controls on the form. I can also select a compact closing style so as I'm closing the actual split view if I select a closing style of compact you'll still see the icons here. Uh, if I select collapse then the entire menu will be collapsed. You can also set the animation delay so you can set the speed at which the uh, drawer slides in or out. Uh, animation step and you can also adjust the placement of the split view control and of course you can also style this control so here we have for example a, cu a custom style iceberg classical you can see we can create our own uh, we can uh, create our own custom styles and also use the split view control with the custom style as well and then of course adjust the UI elements accordingly so that if you're using custom icons, the color scheme, etc., works well with that particular style. And you can see here we have um, the dark style. We also have support, of course, for the Windows 10 blue style. And we also have support for the Windows 10 light style. Now, in this release, we also added a T-toggle switch control for VCL applications. And this control makes it really easy to add a switch to your VCL Windows applications. It can be fully styled using the new Windows 10 styles and also has support for custom styling through the premium styles, for example, that are part of the bonus pack. You can easily switch between two states on and off. You can set to show or hide the captions, and you can also provide your own custom captions as well. So you can see here there's a show state option that allows you to show and hide the state. You can set state captions and of course you could also set all those values programmatically. And this demo is an example that is included uh, with RAD Studio 10 Seattle. So I'm going to deploy this application. And here you see an example of the uh, switch, and again it has support for different types of styles. So for example, I selected to Iceberg Classico here, or I can switch to our Windows 10 Blue style, and it has the traditional Windows 10 styling. You can show or hide the captions, the on-off captions. You could also select your own. So for example, you could set this to Manual or Auto. So you could customize the text that is shown next to your uh, switch control. I can select it to be left justified or right justified. If I select the window style here, I can also switch between some of the uh, color schemes. For example, I can change easily change and adjust the fill. And of course, like I mentioned before, this has support for the Windows 10 styles as well as uh, other default styles that are included with uh, VCL applications that you can set via project options or premium styles. So for example, if you go to project options here, and you go to application appearance you can select some of the premium styles for example copper which is a new style that's part of the premium style pack that is available with RAT Studio 10 Seattle I can select some of the other styles as well and then when I run and deploy this application you'll see that my VCL style drop-down has been updated and you see a custom style now that I can choose from for example for the copper style I can select the green emerald style etc so this just shows you that the toggle switch fully supports both Windows 10 styling as well as custom styling. You can resize the control, etc. Now the search, search box control is an edit control that has multiple customizable properties. So for example, you can set a search indicator of a text icon or an audio icon. You can show an hint, a hint. You can uh, uh, set a variety of additional properties and it is fully stylable as well. So I'm going to run this application here to show you what the search box control looks like. So for example, I can type hello and then I can hit search and it will be shown here in my log. And I could also select SBI audio and you would see the audio icon. And I can hit search and of course this control is also fully stylable as you can see here as well. Now the last control I want to show you is the T activity indicator control and this is an indeterminate progress ring indicator and it lets you choose between many different properties, it's fully stylable, etc. So you can drop the T activity indicator control onto your form, you can select to animate this control, you can adjust the indicator color, you can select the indicator size, you can select the indicator type, etc. 
So now let's have a look at what uh, the indicator looks like at runtime. So first we're going to check off to animate this control. We have a rotating sector, we have a rotating ring, and we have the momentum dots. And these momentum dots are the indeterminate ring uh, indicator style dots that you are probably familiar with and have seen on Windows 8 and Windows 10. And then we can adjust the indicator size as well. We can select white or black. Uh, and it's fully supported with both default styles and also custom styles. Now in RAT Studio 10 Seattle, we added a new option to enable high DPI awareness in your VCL applications. And you can set that via project options. You can toggle this enable high DPI setting. And what that means is when you're moving a form from one monitor to another monitor that has a different DPI, the VCL application and the controls on your form will automatically be rescaled according to the new DPI. And there's no specific coding or any changes that you need to make programmatically to support that in your application. So that's another great feature that was added in RAT Studio 10 Seattle. And if you want to learn more about that, you can go to our blog on community.embarcadero.com and you can have a look at Luis Navarro's blog that talks about new per DPI awareness in VCL applications. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the Windows 10 VCL UI controls that I showed you today, you can also go to blogs, select Serena DuPont, and you can browse to my getting started with the new Windows 10 VCL UI controls in Red Studio 10 Seattle blog post, where I highlight the controls that I showed you today. I also list where you can access the demos, etc. Our doc wiki also has a lot of great information about the new Windows 10 controls. So for example, there's a tutorial that talks about how to use the relative panel tips and tricks, etc and uh, a lot of API documentation as well on the new VCL Windows 10 controls. So this was a quick demo of the new VCL Windows 10 controls and our high DPI support for VCL applications. The question that I, that I mentioned right up front, uh, if you use these five controls, they run on Windows 7 and 8? Yep. Yes, that's, uh, that's one of the main common questions we get, so that's uh, correct. All those new VCL controls, Serena just showed, as David said, they'll work fine on Windows 7, 8, 8 8.1, and, and 10, so that's good to know. I guess technically you could probably use the Windows 10 theme on Windows 8 as well, but probably not a good idea to confuse your users maybe, but yeah, yeah, they're all designed to support across multiple platforms. Okay, otherwise uh, I was answering some other questions about um, subscription update, uh, targeting different platforms, uh, which versions that we support of the different mobile platforms. Uh, all of that is in the doc wiki and I'll get those links if, if Jim or Al hasn't already put them into the Q&A log. We'll make sure to get those links to you. But if you could just go to the doc wiki, you can search for platforms or click on the top level platform support and you'll see the different versions of Android. I'm, I'm running on Android 5 or uh, now on my devices I have not moved to Marshmallow yet or Android M. Maybe others have. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, question about a Macintosh IDE uh, and not currently. Uh, we have a lot of uh, VCL that's being used in the IDE so you could use a really, it depends on what you want from an IDE, is you could just use any text editor you want to edit your code and then pump it across to a Windows box to do the build. There are options, it really depends on what your objective is, but we, we're not shipping a Mac IDE yet, no. Not, yeah. We don't have plans for it either on the roadmap.